Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Hateful Boyfriend. It might be Hateful Boyfriend, I'm not totally sure. This is a, a game that I was very interested to play for a number of reasons. First off, it's published by Devolver Digital, who has a really great track record. Always sometimes monsters, Luftrausers, heavy bullets, etc, etc. Lots of great stuff that has come out, Broforce, etc. Um, that I've really liked from them. Secondly, it's a genre I don't normally play. It's a visual novel slash dating sim. I don't know if one of those terms is kind of pejorative. Uh, so I think visual novel is the preferable one, and I've never really been much for visual novels I've covered a couple on the channel and typically I find myself being not necessarily too thrilled with them uh, Because they don't really tickle my fancy although a lot of I, I know a lot of people really enjoy the genre This one I thought maybe would be a little bit different because it's you know staffed or inhabited entirely by a population of sentient and communicative pigeons that is the draw for this game the gimmick if you will I also want to apologize, I'm a little bit under the weather, you can probably tell by my voice, get used to it, apparently it's gonna be like that for a couple of days, thanks a lot, Pax. So, Hateful Boyfriend, it's available for 10 bucks on Steam, let's get started, I'm gonna load up a new game here. You didn't even know that I coughed there, thanks to the miracle of, well, not editing, but the miracle of broadcasting. So, when we start, we enter our name here, and, um, you know, I think it would be remiss if we didn't at least roll with some kind of bird pun, but I don't really know... You know, I'm not very clever, so we're just gonna name ourselves Pidgeon, which is really stupid because we play as the only human character in the game. It's like, you know, we don't ever see ourselves, but we're the only human female that's, you know, attending the school that's entirely for gifted pigeons. Is Pidgeon okay? Sure, it's gotta be, I guess. Hateful Boyfriend includes a powerful visualization module allowing even the birdiest of birds to appear as normal humans when first introduced. Disable or display human portraits. We will go with yes on that. There's gonna be a lot of reading here, get used to it. Um, despite the kind of gimmick here, the the absurd gimmick, if you will, it seems to play pretty much like a straight but very streamlined visual novel experience, if you know what I mean. Um, this is not a game where it's gonna take you five hours to get to an ending. This is a game where it might take you half an hour to 45 minutes. I got one of the endings in the game already, as I understand it from reading other reviews. One of the big draws of the game is getting all of those endings, and apparently there's a little bit more than meets the eye, uh, you know, Transformers style here in Hateful Boyfriend, although I'll admit that, uh, you know, in my time with the game so far, despite finding it humorous at times, there's pretty much no way I'm gonna go through and, and grind out all these endings just to, to see what I'm missing. So yes, to avoid burying the lead, if you are the kind of person like me who is like, intrigued by visual novels, but not necessarily super into them, I don't think Hateful Boyfriend does enough to really pull you in, because the mechanics are so similar to the rest of the genre, and as you'll see. St. Pigeonations, a school blessed with extensive curricula and faculties, sorry, facilities. It's already been a year since I ended my ordinary life and walked through these gates. I should probably say this school is known for one thing in particular. This school is Japan's, know the world's, greatest gathering place for gifted birds next to the subway station at West Georgia and Granville Street in downtown Vancouver. P birds who want to study the arts, the sciences, even sports, all come to St. Pigeonations. The teaching staff and student body are made up of a diverse blend of birds of different backgrounds and species. I'm often asked why I choose to come here despite not becoming a bird, or not being a bird. It's a long story. And I'm not gonna do different bird voices here because, again, first off, I have no talent in voice acting. Secondly, my voice is like fucking Tom Waits just sm swallowed like an iron smelter or something like that, so I, I can't really do it. Not every day I see you rushing along like this. This is our um, best friend, and also, just to be clear, we play as a female, and it's based in heterosexual relationships. The pigeons that we're going to encounter are male. So, I mean, you might not be able to tell that. Of course, me, with my four-year degree in biology, you can tell from the uh, mottled feathers. No, I have no fucking idea. Ryuda. Usually you'd have been ready for an hour by now, Pid. Overslept. And then we'll get introduced and we kind of see them, uh, you know, as they are in human form. I'll admit that uh, Hateful Boyfriend, I, I'm unfamiliar with the history of it, but I know that it used to be a visual novel that I think might have been free. I don't know if it was based on pigeons, though, when it originally came out. Uh, or if these portraits were uh, especially made to just kind of, again, add to the absurdity. It's not like this guy's been turned into a pigeon. That's just like his human form despite the fact that he's always been a pigeon. He can be a little mischievous, but he's responsible and kind. How sweet. Breakfast was a little hard to catch today. I can't relax without red meat inside. Living as a hunter-gatherer sounds tough. I'd be happy to make you breakfast, you know. I don't know if I want to have a bird's breakfast, to be honest with you. We should be going inside now. One of the things I will say about the game is that the visual style, I think, is hilarious. The the kind of melding of these pretty high-quality photos of birds, along with the, the standard kind of, like, you know, 
I don't want to say cartoony, but animated backgrounds and stuff like that with the uh, the, the text boxes. It, it's a dichotomy that does tickle my fancy a little bit. And so for you to pull me along into the school. And the music's good as well. It does get a little repetitive, but it'll get stuck in your head and it sets the, the tone properly as well. Today is the start of a new semester. I wonder what lies in store. It was all I could do to adjust to the atmosphere last year. Better make up for all that lost fun. So we play, um, I think we play four terms in Hate a Full Boyfriend, but I... My first ending came in the third term, which I think was just due to the decisions that I made. I'm not going to spoil that ending for you, but anyway. Um, we're going to get started, and day one is actually, like, pretty much just going to introduce characters. So, you know, if you're not into reading when you play a video game, or if you're not into um, visual novels in general, get used to, you know, clicking this button a lot. And I'm actually going to skip through a lot of the dialogue here. Um, just because day one pretty much just serves to introduce characters that we're going to have for the rest of the game. So this is uh, Kazuaki. He is our math teacher, and he also apparently suffers from uh, an advanced form of narcolepsy or something like that, which makes him fall asleep all the time. That's his characterization. Um, I, I like this, by the way. He's a famously soporific math professor. I learned a new word. I guess that means he falls asleep quite frequently. I don't know. Oh, God. Oh, God. Stop, stop, stop. I didn't realize that was actually a toggle. So you could actually play through the game super quickly and just get to the decisions that way if you want to. Um, like, I guess if you let it play like this, you only... Oh my Jesus Christ, I, I, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that that actually went so fast. I thought it would stop when it introduced a new character. We also got introduced to um, Sakuya. Sakuya is like a royal bird, basically. He's an aristocrat. Not in the gross, you know, jokey kind of way. Lunch already? Today is slipping by so quickly. That reminds me, I've had these books out from the library all summer. I'll return them now. So I think the uh, the play button here is used so you can get to those decisions as quickly as possible and grind out those endings, which, to be honest with you, is probably an incredibly astute decision on the part of the developers, because uh, otherwise, you know, even though the game is quite short as far as uh, visual novels go, at least by my estimation, in limited experience in the genre, I'll admit, um, you know, it can get a little tedious seeing the same uh, dialogue pop up over and over, and over the course of a game, there might only be 12 or 15 decisions that you have to make, so, you know, rushing those decisions seems to make sense. A morning dove stands in a dark corner staring in my direction. Morning doves aren't very common in Japan, but apparently they're everywhere in America. Um, did you want something from me? Exclamation mark. I don't know how to vocalize that. He looked away. Not really. I'm pretty sure it was him who I felt looking at me. There's no one else here. Are you sure? Yes, I don't want anything with you. It's the things you're carrying that I'm interested in. He glances at the desk as if to say, hurry up and return them already. Oh, sorry. Eh, he, he. They were a little too dense and I never finished them. So this is, um... Nageki, he is, uh, I'm John Pid? That's not the way that should read, unless I'm an idiot. Um, yes, uh, Fujishiro Nageki is, uh, a freshman who is, you know, a little bit reserved, shy. There might possibly be a subplot where he's the target of abuse from his, uh, you know, upperclassmen. Basically, the way that I've played the game so far is pretty much, uh, you just find a pigeon that you want to, you know, make your boyfriend. I never thought I would say that sentence in all of my days uh, doing this, but yes, find the pigeon you want to make your boyfriend and kind of rush like the stats and the, the decisions that put you closer to them as often as possible. Alright, so again, we're learning something a little bit more here. I'm just going to skip through this. I, I'm actually tempted to see how this works out. This is Yuya Sakazi. He's like the brother of the other aristocrat and he's um, a ladies man. Alright, excuse me. We've gotten to the... Uh, I was going to say the lavatory, but I mean the infirmary here. Because Ryuta, he's kind of, he's our best friend. Remember the one that we met at the early game? He's got a weak stomach, and he's constantly in and out of the hospital, and his family is a little weak, you know? He's, he's not got the best immune system out there. Uh, and we'll get introduced to one last character here. You can also click through the dialogue boxes if you're more interested in uh, doing that, as opposed to just pressing this button and going buck wild. Um, and we're going to get introduced to one more character. This is the Doctor, Shu. Not quite Motley uh, Crew's, it should, it should be Dr. Crew, but not quite a doctor that you'd write about if, uh, if you were Motley Crew. What is that terrible joke? This partridge is Iwamine Shu, the school doctor. He's rather creepy in person and has a bad reputation among the student body. Every bird he knows that just talking to him can bring you down with aspergillus, cetacosis, or even worse things. And I never even heard him come in the door, ninja doctor? The game does have a commitment to the, the kind of bird puns as you, you know, you may be able to gather. Or hunt for. You can't worm your way out of it. There's no wordplay there. Don't worry about it. Alright. Um, let's just skip by. 
little bit of this dialogue here and see how long it goes on for. Because basically, this is another character. He's Okasan. He's crazy. He's a, you know, a very fast runner. Um, I want to see if this button actually takes us to the uh, decisions. So if we just keep it going here. Yeah, okay, so that's, if you hold down the button, you just get to skip directly to the decisions. Uh, unless you're the world's fastest reader, you're probably not going to be able to figure out that dialogue in time. So, we can join the student council. Uh, if you read all the text, which you should do on your first playthrough, of course. This would take us closer to the aristocratic pigeon, Sakuya. Track team will take us closer to the crazy pigeon, Okasan. Library staff would take us closer to, uh, was it Nakemi? An infirmary? Maybe Ryuta, but also the doctor. I'm gonna join the library staff and learn a little bit more about our reserved, uh, our reserved friend here. I joined the, the track team last time, but I ended up pursuing a track where I like met Ryuta, and we we became friends. Uh, and it was very sweet. There actually is some touching writing in the game. As much as I, oftentimes find myself not disillusioned, but not really spoken to by the kind of like middle school or high school or college aesthetic or narrative setting that uh, almost all visual novels seem to take place in. There are some touching moments if you take the time to actually read it. There's also kind of a rudimentary stat system, and I'm not sure if this runs the same way that something like Long Live the Queen does, where, uh, you know, occasionally there will be tests for your stats. I think there are, but I'm not totally sure. Um, so, you know, in Long Live the Queen, you would actually have, like, you know, 30 stats or something like that, and then whenever someone would ask you about something, you would run a test to see if your stat was high enough to actually pass, here, we only have Wisdom, Vitality, and Charm, and they've seemed pretty arbitrary so far, but because I'm gonna be going after a uh, brainy dude, why don't we go to Math class? That'll bump up our Wisdom by five points every time. I don't know why our Vitality is uh, so high. Like, uh, why is our Vitality 800? Maybe it's because we're a human and we're living in a school where the norm would be birds, and birds might have lower Vitality? I don't know. This is new for me, so I'm actually gonna read this. I, I went to, again, went to the track team last time. Boring as usual, the library here doesn't seem very popular. Not enough books. It's on the fifth floor, so at least the view is nice. Sitting here twiddling my thumbs is bad for me. I wish someone would come ask me something. Dot, 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 dot. There's no birdie here. I wonder if it would be okay to close early. I wish I could just spread my wings and fly away. Planning to jump off the building. The window there is rather good for that, Miss Receptionist. Wow, that's a little bit presumptuous. Hey, it's our uh, the person we wanted to meet. Nageki, when did you... I've been here all along. I never noticed. He's almost as bad as the doctor. You're thinking I have no presence, right? It's okay. I already know that. Oh, come on, dude. Don't introduce yourself in a conversation just to garner some sympathy here. I'm a nice pigeon, but, you know, I'm a nice human, I guess, actually. But, uh, let's have a real conversation. Um, do we have a decision here? That's usually what that means. Uh, I think I asked, like, are you here all the time? And then he was like, is that a problem? Let's say no. Books are nice. We want to... Maybe he'll found a software engineering company someday and we can live lavish. Be so fancy. Why don't you join the library staff, Nageki? You could read whatever you want. I already read whatever I want. Touche? You shouldn't slack off, Miss Receptionist. And with that, he takes a book and is gone between the stacks. What a strange bird, and for once, that is literally true. So we'll probably play this through uh, until maybe like the start or the middle of the second term. The reason is I want you to get a feel for the pace of the game. I, oftentimes when I play visual novels, I find myself getting ground down by the fact that, you know, I've been in school, right? You don't need to model every single day. The vast majority of days don't have interesting things happen. But just like a crisis every single day is like, I can't handle it. This, uh, you might have like seven or eight days per term uh, in Hattiful Boyfriend, which I think is uh, a little bit more conducive to me actually having finished the ending once before I got kind of frustrated with, me with the mechanics of the game. Uh, yeah, so it moves quickly, and I think, again, now that I've discovered what this button does, I'm a big fan of it. Today's the hike, we've stopped for a break on the hillside, who should I talk to? Talk to, um, oh, our, our library friend is not here. Let's talk to, uh, let's talk to Okasan, who is the crazy running bird. I haven't seen him since we stopped here. He is like, he's kind of like Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. He only speaks in coups, and then we kind of figure out what he's saying from there. So it's not here, the pudding is not here. It's missing, did you bring it to eat for lunch? No, Okasan believed that the wonderful pudding could be found on hikes. Is there a kind of pudding that lives in the mountains? Okasan will now search elsewhere for the pudding. And he's gone. Goodbye, Okasan. How exciting. I want to pursue the path of, uh, you know, dating Okasan just to see what happens there. You know, you'd be married for like 40 years and he'd be like, Hey, I just, you know, sold our TV for pudding. And you'd be like, oh, Okasan, you're still the same as the day that we met. All right, what are we going to attend today? Let's go math class. Again, I think wisdom's good, you know. I don't know if we're going to need charm for this person. 
uh, that we're trying to mate. Uh, <laughs> I said mate. That's not really what I meant. Or I imagine you're already uh, aware of it, but the sports festival is right around the corner. Please think about what you'll do. I'm just going to uh, skip through a lot of this dialogue because, again, pretty much the decisions are the only thing that ends up mattering. So it's the sports festival. Is there anything that I could do to um, hang out with him? Uh, the Nageki. Yeah, we can go to the library instead. Great sports festival. I'm participating in the most intellectual of all sports, the pursuit of knowledge. May is practically summer already. It's too hot. I think I'll rest in the library. Much better. It's nice that the air conditioner is on, but do we really need it? No birdies in here today. They really like every, butter, every birdie and no birdie. You again? I assumed. It's you, Nageki. It's you, Miss John. At least he's not calling me Mr. Receptionist anymore. Yeah, uh, see, I'm getting invested right now. They don't turn the air conditioning on until June. It just feels cold compared to outside. It would be a little strange to start spending money to cool a barely used library in May. Anyway, aren't you going to participate in the festival, Nageki? Aren't you? Eep! I don't like it outside, so I stay in here. That's all. All right, great conversation as usual. Oh, we're starting to make some, uh, a little, uh, progress here. We're having a real conversation. I spent the whole day telling him about the festival and whatnot while well, he read. I don't know how much he was listening to me, but he didn't seem to mind. I think we're starting to make some progress. I do want to stress that this is definitely not a, uh, a puzzle game. Either this is a game where it's very easy to figure out what the solutions are. You know, you you want to get with the pigeon that's you know running the track team, join the track team and go to gym class as often as possible. It's not meant to be a puzzle game. It's more about the journey than the the destination, I guess. Um, let's see how we did on the test. Uh, said I read it very quickly. He said work hard and uh, keep it up, and one day you'll be something. I wonder what I should do during break. Go to the. Um, Guess we can't. Why can't I go to the library? We can rush into the infirmary quickly, and we're almost at the end of the day here, uh, or the end of the term, I should say. You again? Are you ill? I think he says you again. The last time I was in here was like eight months ago, or longer, like ten months ago. Not exactly. Then why are you here? I came here to uh, hear your voice. My voice? Yes, you sound like Snoofkin. I don't know what that is. Don't tell me you came here just for that. Would it be bad if I did? You're even stranger than I thought. I'm fascinated at how I'd love to experiment on you. I imagine this guy's path is probably one of the weirder endings going on. Sadly, I am busy at present. Please go elsewhere. Okay. Yeah, I guess it would actually be awesome to see what happens if you start becoming like the Igor to the Dr. Frankenstein in, in his experiments. I don't know what will happen there. Something potentially very strange. It's an elective day. We'll just go to um, math class again. I don't, again, I don't really know if there's tests for this, but we do take exams and stuff like that. Um, so I think that it's, uh, maybe that helps us do better by doing that. Um, is this math class or nap time? Doesn't really matter to me. I could use a nap in my Neocitrin and Robitussin DM fueled nightmare illness right now. Today is Tanabata. There's probably a bamboo tree in the plaza this year too. I think I'll go make a wish. So this is good for some characterization. Uh, we can see what um, people have wished for. I don't know what the Tanabata festival is, but I guess it's kind of a, you know, you write your wish on a tree and then just kind of leave it there. Nanaki's there. Just who will be granting my wish and how? That's our doctor. And I think this also serves the other purpose of kind of uh, letting us know we're going to say become a famous artist or rule the world from the shadows. I don't know. Uh, I think this sets us up for the ending as well, and it also lets us know, like, um, what, what, uh, pigeons were kind of in the running for, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna say no to this guy's walk home. And I think that might be the end of the first term, actually. Today's an elective day, what should I do? We'll attend math class. And I wanted to keep the- you might be saying, well, you're just showing the same thing over and over in the video. Pretty much that's how I wanted to- to frame this video, because... I do sort of feel that it does get a little repetitive. Let's see how we did on the on the final. Well done, you've gotten even better. Keep up the good work. That's great. Uh, maybe that's if you want to woo the math teacher, you would try to do well on your math test. But um, yes, I, I wanted to show uh, that it does kind of become a little repetitive as time goes on, and you really, really have to be invested in the story if that's something that um, is going to draw you to this game. I don't think it's a bad game. I, I just think it's a visual novel that is not accessible really for people who are not into visual novels and that's kind of what I was hoping it would be is something that maybe is like a visual novel that I can for once actually get behind it. I want to stress that I don't have any problem with the visual novel genre except that I don't really find myself enjoying the games. It's not like I think they're not actually games or anything like that. Um, 
It's just that uh, they've never really tickled my fancy, much in the same way that I've never played like an MMO really be before, more than an hour or so. It's just not the kind of thing that's for me. Uh, Nageki, he's being quite rude to me. Please be quiet in the library. You're rather noisy today. Did you want something? Nope, I was just wondering if you were here. Of course, I'm always here. He replies from his corner in a somewhat anno annoyed tone of voice. Oh, the book he's holding. That's a signed reading this semester. Is it any good? Not really. I'm almost done with it. It forces its safe ethical viewpoint on the reader, like all assigned reading. The whole concept is inane. Why force everyone to read the same books? It is pretty boring most of the time. What do you like to read? Um... What do I read? What would he like? What about Night on the Galactic Railroad? That sounds pretty sweet. What about Night on the Galactic Railroad? I liked it. Too stereotypical. Oh, wow. Sorry. Oh, he liked it too. Alright, we're on the same page then. And so I spend the afternoon working in the library, occasionally exchanging a word with Nageki. And she seems to be enjoying it. Or we seem to be enjoying it. So this is the, the first day of summer. I think that's where I'm going to end this episode. It might be a little bit on the short side, but I'm mostly glad that my voice just didn't super go crazy and crack. Uh, this is Hattiful Boyfriend. There is more than meets the eye going on here, I'm sure of it. Uh, but I won't see it just because it, it requires, um, you know, iterating on these, these paths. And I had a reasonably okay time going through it on the first try. But if you're not into visual novels, I don't think this is going to be the one that's necessarily going to pull you in and make you uh, excited about the genre. And if you are into visual novels... I appreciate watching the video up to this point, but you should probably watch someone who's more into visual novels who can, you know, have a better base to compare it to other stuff that is maybe uh, a little bit more of a hallmark of the genre. But for people like me, don't play many VNs. Uh, I think this one, just okay. Not quite as, as like, absurd as I, maybe I wanted it to be, which kind of sounds offensive, but what I was really hoping for was like a funny kind of contemporary visual novel, and instead, it plays it pretty straight, except everybody's basically pigeons. That's okay, too. Had a Full Boyfriend is available on Steam. It's $9.99 for, it's... Retail price. I was going to say opening week sale, but I'm not sure it has one. And uh, my internet, unfortunately, happens to be out right now. Otherwise, I would be playing Counter-Strike Global Offensive and slamming Neo Citrin, a.k.a. you know, cold medicine, like the day is long. But in any case, there will be a link in the video description below to pick it up on Steam if you're interested. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more first impressions like this in the future. And I'll see you next time.